Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am joined here with my friend and your friend, Emmy, from her page, Holistic Genie. And I know, Emmy, it's been a, it's been a minute since we've been on a, ch- on a show together because you have a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's somewhere. Hopefully sleeping. Anybody been- who's had a, had a puppy knows that it is like having an infant, isn't it? <laughs> It is. It's like, you know, it, it's not quite, it's not quite as much work because I'm not breastfeeding or anything, but like you have to constantly watch them. I mean, and even with constant, constantly watching him, we've still lost like multiple pairs of shoes and flip flops and belts and hats. And um, what else? He chewed up something really expensive. Oh, yeah. I just bought this, and this was like a few weeks ago. I had just bought this super fast charging box with the cord that goes with it. And you got to buy them separately. And it was like $30 for one and $25 for the other one. Just bought it. I used it two nights and he chewed that up. I'm like, son of a bitch. (laughs) Bye. My it's, friend Pat Robbie uh, chewed up my my laptop charger, and I had to go buy all pay all this money to get a whole new re- laptop charger. Yeah, you guys, I, I have a friend, um, another Ashtanga teacher, and whenever somebody would tell her that they got a new puppy, she'd be like, "Well, okay, I'll see you in a year then." Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he he's <laughs> unexpectedly uh, he's completely bonded with me, <clears throat> and he follows me everywhere. And my husband was like, you're going to have to come with me when I um, go out birding. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, you're you're the one that wanted the, the, the new dog. And I got all the responsibility. And now he bonded with me. And he doesn't even come when he calls him. It's He'll because come. you're... It's been, okay, so I, I, um, I, I learned this because Ravi is very, very protective of me like very protective of me, will follow me everywhere. He hates it when other men touch me. So like if my boyfriend touches me or if someone hugs me who's a man, he gets very upset. And I read somewhere that it's because he's a male dog. So female dogs will feel very (laughs) protective over the male. Male dogs will feel very protective over the female. My parents have a female, uh, a King Charles, like a very small little cavalier dog. She's obsessed with my stepdad, obsessed with him. So in every situation, it seems like the opposite sex human. It's like this little love affair. <laughs> yeah. So she's, yeah, like, was a- she's like, Emmy's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he sleeps on my side of the bed. He follows me everywhere. Like when it's nap time and I'm busy and I'm busy, I'm all over the house. He'll just go in the room that I'm in and lay on the floor. Yep. Even if I go to the next room, he gets up and follows me to the next room. It's yep. super cute. And, and you know, I'm, I'm definitely <clears throat> growing more and more fond of him uh, all the time. But I just was not. I wasn't prepared for this. And yeah, it's, you're his mom. Yeah. Well, I will mm-hmm. say, even though I'm not a hunter, um, I know that my, my dad, my dad's a veterinarian and, but he was also ironically into hunting as well. And he always said the best hunting dogs to get are the female dogs because they are more submissive and they train better. They're looking, females are naturally looking towards the alpha of the pack to guide them and so he always had female dogs as his hunting dogs that he trained to hunt um so just I, even though i'm not a hunter i'm a vegetarian but for those who know anything about the the sport of hunting mm-hmm. that was from a veterinarian that you you get the the female dogs and i can see it because ravi tries to compete mm-hmm. with my 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 boyfriend for being the alpha like he it's it's hysterical um, this fall, I, I believe, as it stands now, that I'm going to be with Catherine Edwards with an ASEA thing in Texas this fall. And I'm hoping I can drive out there so I can bring Ravi. Um, and so Ravi can meet Catherine because Ravi is obsessed with Catherine. Every time I'm on the line with Catherine, he starts licking his wiener. Uh, so, uh, so 
<laughs> it's only Catherine. Like whatever he's in the room and I'm on the camera with Catherine. You're like he just starts. It's always with Catherine that he starts doing that. Um, and so, but I. It's oh, she be, is beautiful. I mean, she's she's a dog man. whisperer. She's a dog whisperer, and I know that the minute he sees Catherine in person, this is what my dog, my male dog, will do. Anytime, and even if, if Emmy, well, anytime a female walks into our house or is in our vicinity, my dog will show off. But he shows off by trying to challenge my boyfriend to like a duel. But his tail's wagging the whole time as he's like, and he'll look like he's like challenging my boyfriend and his tail's wagging. And he like looks at the woman to make sure she's paying attention. <laughs> That's hilarious <laughs> to see how alpha he is like, but his tail's wagging the whole time. So that's how, you know, like when dogs are play fighting or playing mm -hmm. Rob, you know, that their, their tail's wagging. It's all, it's all, it's all play. It's not, you know, when their tail's not wagging, that's when it's serious, but you'll see his tail wagging. So his tail giving him away. And then he's like looking, he's looking. In fact, yesterday I was on, I had Jay, our, our friend Jay from, from ASEA. We had a, a phone, a conversation on the phone. I had him on my speakerphone. And so um, you could hear it. You know, we were in the house and I was talking to Jay. And I don't even think Jay, Jay knows this. So Jay, if you, if you see this video, my dog started to get upset that I was talking to obviously another man on the phone. And so he started to show off again. He was making all sorts of noises, trying to get my attention because he could hear that Jay was a male. Now, it was a strictly, it was a business meeting. Like, there was nothing fun. But, you know, it's just funny how they are. They get they get jealous. They get possessive. They they see the, um you know, you know, for Emmy, you're his mom. You're his provider. You're his comfort. You're his new, you know, you know, my boyfriend is the one that makes all of Ravi's food for him. But Ravi still sees me as like the top banana, you know, because I'm a female. I'm his mama. You know, so, um, so yeah, it's sweet. Dogs are sweet, man. We don't deserve dogs. They, they are, they're hard as puppies, but when they, they're just so loving and they're just so funny and they're so innocent in the way that they are. But yes, you guys, when, when Ravi meets Catherine for the first time, I will make sure to film it. So everybody can see. Oh <laughs> see, you see, you see what he does to show <laughs> off in front of, I told Catherine if she brings her husband, then he's in trouble because Robbie's <laughs> not going to be happy that she's got her <laughs> husband with her. Um, so anyway, we have quite a big show today. We got a lot to talk about this going on right now. Today, we are filming this on Saturday, July 22nd. Um, now. You guys might have noticed at the beginning of this video, especially on my channel, that it was Emmy's links that I shared. Emmy's links are going to be down in the description box for ASEA as well, because Emmy is also sponsored by ASEA. And so, um, Emmy, we were talking like yesterday on the phone and this morning a little bit about ASEA, because I know you, like me, a lot of us who have these YouTube channels, we get offers all the time for for products i know for me i've turned down a lot of, of offers because i just didn't quite j jive with the product but with the sia from the moment catherine told me about it and jay told me about it and the integrity of the company i was already sold before energetically sold before i even tried the product and we were talking last night and this morning and you've had some pretty incredible experiences with this product so do you want to just from like a spiritual perspective do you want to kind of go into that a little bit about what and this can kind of lead us into what we were going to talk about today anyway but like what have your experience you've been doing a SIA for how long now so i started taking a SIA um the end of march <clears throat> so april may june july like almost four months um shortly after i started taking it um, I had a miscarriage. I didn't even realize that I was pregnant. Um, so it was a very uh, early miscarriage and it, it wasn't until, um, anyway, I won't go into the details of, of that, but I've had a miscarriage before and this miscarriage, although it was pretty intense, was much shorter and I was able to, um, almost like deal with the emotional repercussions. I mean, it, it, I went through an emotional roller coaster. At first, I was just in absolute shock and awe that I could even get pregnant because <clears throat> A, I'm 46. B, I have polycystic ovary syndrome. C, I have adenomyosis. And four, my tubes are tied. 
So the the fact that like it even happened, I was just like, what? <laughs> I was in awe. And then God was like, hold my beer, hold my beer. Yeah, right. Watch this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, so <clears throat> it's a miracle that I've had any children at all, let alone seven, and then having getting pregnant after all that. It's just just incredible. So then, you know, the the emotions went from that to realizing, oh my gosh there was a baby in me and now it's gone, you know, and there was grief and, you know, all, all the whole gamut. But the whole process was much, much shorter. And, and although it was intense, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like the miscarriage I had before. Um, the, the, the pain wasn't as bad. Um, it, it was definitely shorter and, and I'm talking shorter, like with the physical symptoms and the emotional, uh, psychological symptoms. <clears throat> so probably about three weeks total. And I was healed physically from that. The emotional stuff, you know, took a little bit longer because I mean, that's, that's a shocking experience. Um, so that happened. And then, um, for those three weeks, I took a break from my yoga practice. And then um, after that, I, I got back into it very slowly. And within a couple of weeks, I noticed that um, I was needing a lot of sleep. And I really tried to push through with my practice, my yoga practice. Um, but it had the opposite effect on those days that I tried to push through. And so I'm like, okay, so maybe it's not ego that's telling me to push through this practice. Like maybe I really need to take some time and, and rest. And so I cut it back to <clears throat> just a couple of days a week. And I was really only doing um, the uh, sun salutations, Surya Namaskar A and B. Um, and sleeping, like I was sleeping a good four or five days a week, 10 to 12 hours a night. And I was sleeping through and, and since 2019, I have woken up in the middle of the night, almost every single night for like a half an hour. It just, I, it just became a, a, I just became used to it. It was just part of my spiritual awakening, I think. Um, well, I was sleeping all the way through, not even having to get up to go to the bathroom. Like I needed the rest. And so I just, I just kept it at that. Well, I noticed this past week that I started naturally waking up at quarter to five, five o'clock again. And I'm like, okay, I feel rested. I feel alert. Um, I'm going to try, you know, given my practice to go. And I was fully prepared to having to like go back to where I was when I first started, <clears throat> you know, because it had been a couple of months where I was pretty inconsistent. Um, but no, in fact, I feel like I have more strength and stamina and flexibility than when I was before I, I took this little hiatus. And I was just like, wow, okay, this this is really interesting. So I believe that <clears throat> because this whole year so far, I have been very, very dedicated to A Course in Miracles. I, um, you know, and, and I'm saying this from an observer's standpoint, I have never been this consistent with anything in my life. And I, I'm not taking credit. I don't want to fall into pride. Um, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm, I, I didn't miss a day. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. That's I want to so be spiritual. I'm so spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, I really don't want to do that but I am I do find it quite remarkable and I am I am quite amazed that I'm just I'm just so hungry for it like what Course in Miracles has given me is the step-by-step -step lessons every day to um, overcome ego consciousness while simultaneously embodying Christ consciousness. And see, I've read so many books where it talks about what it's like to be enlightened and how you think and how things are differently and, and these experiences and everything and embodying it. But there's, there's never been a book that I've read that says how to get from point A to point B. And Course in Miracles for me seems to be the bridge. 
And it, it, how it works on you is so far beyond words because it isn't something that you can learn. It's like you, you can, you can absorb. Yes. Course in Miracles. For those who don't know what she's talking about, this is a Course in Miracles right here. And I'll put a link to this down in the description box, but you're actually taking a course yes. on the Course in Miracles, which also incorporates a lot of the law of one too, correct? It doesn't incorporate law of one, but the teacher, one of my teachers is very fluent in law of one. So when he's discussing the lessons, um, date in the daily lesson uh, plan, he does bring in concepts of law, law of one, but it, it is, it is strictly a course, um, a school for a course in miracles. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it, it, it's like, it's like been the bridge. And, and what I was saying is like, you can go so far with learning, but embodying Christ consciousness and having the experiences, like experiential, like feeling it in your body is something that cannot be learned. Right. It's, it's something that you have to have trust and faith that will absolutely for certain happen. You cannot fail. All you do is bring your body and your mind will follow. And it's like God does the heavy lifting for you. It's like, you know, you you show God your willingness, you show universe your willingness, and it will meet you with that same um, energy. And oh my gosh, you guys, I have had the most amazing oneness experiences that, you know, I'll try to explain a couple. Um but like I was saying, it's so far beyond words. It's like, it's, it's nearly indescribable. And it's like for like all the education you, you take on the yoga practices, reading this, the sacred scriptures, contemplating what they're saying, that's what's opening the door for you to have the experience. Because I know for me, I wouldn't even know what that was if it wasn't for studying the, the ancient scriptures. And so you're right. You in, and that's one thing like, like even Ram Dass says at some point you have to put even the yoga down because that is what's, that's a label itself. And so it's just a tool. It's all it is. All these books, these practices, they're just tools for you to eventually figure it out. And what she's saying with the, I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the ASEA, Guys, we were talking, for those who don't know what she was talking about with the ASEA, the ASEA is a redox supplement. Um, all you've done really, Emmy, is just the, the the liquid and the gel, correct? Yeah. Believe it or not. I ventured into the nutrients or anything. I was just telling her the vitamins are some of my favorite. But with this CDOX, for, for a redox, CDOX, redox, <laughs> the ASEA, it's one of those days, guys. My words are getting jumbled. Um, with the, the liquid, all this supplement is doing. So we talk a lot on this channel, and I know Emmy talks a lot about this too. You know, when we look at the complexities of, of being here in the human experience, what we're working with is is this great amount of friction between the body and the soul like what what greater opposing forces is there to be in a mortal body with an immortal soul like those are two conflicting things already the body is mortal the body will die but the soul is not however the body even though the body is therefore temporary and follows the laws of nature and the soul does not because the soul is eternal the body your body is your shakti it is the expression of your soul now to think of the body as all there is that's where we get into ego that's a false sense of self right part of the enlightenment is knowing this is that knowing you are an eternal soul and the body is just a temporary experience for, for the soul to refine itself and to know itself and what the redox does you guys and so the body and, and and if you guys i'll put emmy's links down in the description box below as well because emmy if you guys don't know if you're new to this channel or this is your first time checking out emmy emmy's a reiki master and so she works a lot with the energies of the body which is what we do in yoga as well and so what's happening what the with the book with the body being the template being the shakti the expression the experience of the soul means that every single human being is going to experience energies differently depending on what type of learning or refining their soul needs to do. Now, the body itself is going to hold information for you. 
And we see that with the chakra system. We see that with, you know, people who have like shoulder issues versus hip issues. There's a deeper rooted emotional attachment there. But it is always going to show itself in the physical form. So what the redox does is the redox returns to your body. It's a supplement that returns signaling back to your body. And so it's not going to stop like the redox is not going to stop things from actually happening that need to happen, but it's going to support your system so that you, you as the person in, inhabiting this body, inhabiting this life can experience the lessons in a more clear and precise way. Does that make sense to me? Yeah. <clears throat> Cause it's yeah, not, the redox, it's not doing it for you. It's a, and that's one thing I love about this product and why I, one of the reasons why I was sold on this product right away is that it's it's literally saying this company creates a sia is saying your body knows what to do your soul knows what to do we're going to support that process for you in the meantime right and so yeah. i just wanted to say that for a sec because I, I want you guys to understand that's what we're saying this isn't a medicine there's no medicine there's nothing there's no chemical here it's just signaling it's just your and as you get older through the toxins of the world or whatever and stress that signaling starts to not be so great so mm -hmm. if the signaling can be brought back to its place the cells can then communicate with each other better right so I just did you watch that video? Did you watch that video when you first um, started ASEA? And I, if you have a link to this video, I would like the link so I can save it. And I can't find it. I saw it one time and it was a short video and it was so helpful. And as far as like understanding what Redox does. So it, it showed, um, it showed a, a burning house and the fire department like we have all this help we have all this help in the fire department all this technology all of the vehicles and trucks and people ready to go and this house is on fire and pretend like this house is an organ or a set of tissues in your body right and the fire department and all of the people and the workers and the technology is your body's healing system okay if there is no signal between the burning house and the fire department, the fire department can't come and help put the house out. And that's what the redox is. It's it's your body's cell service to its repair system. So if you don't have good cell service to the fire department, you can't, you know, get some help, right? It so I, be, I just thought that was I thought that was such a good video. A good, and I'm gonna put it. it might be under Asia's YouTube channel. I will put use Asia's YouTube channel up in the description box so you guys. I've watched a lot of this stuff. I love their vitamins, by the way. Um, but you know, all the Olympic athletes are using it. It's sponsored. It's sponsoring the Olympics because it helps the body. So even non spear, if you're just someone that's like not spiritual, it's going to help the muscles regenerate and rebuild themselves. But with what Emmy is saying, with like the Course of Miracles, the Law of One all the spiritual stuff that she's been going listen listen Lin have you ever seen that video <laughs> listen linda linda <laughs> listen linda <laughs> listen linda when people take on a spiritual practice i think that's one of the biggest misconceptions in the world is people go i'm gonna go take on a spiritual practice and i'm gonna get zen literally when you decide to take on a spiritual practice you are walking into a, a horror house right like all the of valley of the shadow of death <laughs> exactly you are <laughs> going to have to face every part of yourself the shadow side of yourself the darkness within you everything about yourself you can't leapfrog it you can't just jump up into spirituality you have to actually go that's why the lower chakras are like the hell they're they're the you know that's the really mucky stuff that we have to go through and and clear it out in order to then get to the, the top part but when you're going through a spiritual practice it doesn't matter what modality you've picked right they're just tools so all the all the trees in the forest are different but they're all reaching up towards the same light so whether that's yoga tai chi reiki a combination whatever it is you're going to have to face yourself in a very real way in a very real way and so what's going to happen is most likely you're going to start to feel even more aches and pains for a while before you actually have these breakthroughs. And this is very normal and very much expected. Now, most people get to like the first part of their spiritual practice and they, they experience the first hiccup or obstacle or pain and they run away. They run away, right? Because they'd rather be with the devil they know 
versus the devil they don't know like they don't want to have they don't know you know to go through this is hard and so they want to keep just ignoring it but if you stick with it whether it's integrating and, and, and with all this information with the course in miracles the law of one the yoga sutras it's an integration of of this and we we go through these uh, my boyfriend had a teacher once an ayurvedic teacher once that called it a cocooning phase that throughout your spiritual practice you're going to go through these cocooning phases where you need to kind of hibernate because everything every thought you have every sentence you read in course in miracles or thing you contemplate is then going to have an effect throughout the whole the body is the mind field the yoga chitta vritti narodaha it's the mind field and so what the ASEA does is ASEA comes in as a tool, a support system to help you integrate your own understanding. Does that make sense? Yes. So you want to take it from there, Emmy? With the yeah, Course in Miracles? Sure. Yeah. So oof, Course in Miracles, um, it, it it's like, so the first time you're going through it, and this is the first time I'm going through the lessons, I'll, I'll be going through these lessons every day for the rest of my life. Like this book is just phenomenal. Um, but the first time you go through the lessons in practice, um, and it's a year long, there's a lesson for every day of the year. So this is like, this is like a dedicated spiritual practice. This is, this is like, like, like if you're, if you're just new to shadow work, this this is i would not recommend this if if you're if you're brand new to journaling to shadow work um just just keep on your path and and keep learning and growing and um but if you're ready if you've done shadow work for a while and you're ready for the next thing course in miracles is the shit it's it it is it it is mind blowing i i just want to share a couple of the oneness experiences that i've had um, so the, the first one was in one of the, um, centering meditations in the beginning of the lesson from, uh, living the course, which is the school that I'm in. So they prepared and recorded these lessons every day for us. And in this centering exercise in this particular one, God, um, showed me, he had me in my mind's eye sitting cross-legged and I was by myself and one by one God pulled off all of the identities and stories of Emmy right Emmy the mom Emmy the wife Emmy the sister Emmy the daughter you know Emmy the business owner Emmy the addict you know just everything and they, there was like all these tv screens like floating around me and my body kind of disappeared and dissolved and it was just a light body there's this this beautiful sparkling golden white light and and that was that was the christ light and then god said okay bring the person to mind the person you can't stand the most and so i was a little hesitant but i was like okay fine <clears throat> and so this person was sitting cross-legged and God started pulling off all of their identities and stories. And there were TV screens floating all around this person. And in the middle was the same Christ light. And this person that I chose was heinous. Okay. Just heinous. Pulled off all the stories, all the identities, everything. And it was the same Christ light that was in me. And that experience was so incredibly profound. And it wasn't something that I grasped intellectually. It was, it was felt like I felt the oneness. I felt completely and totally connected to this person that I hated. And the hate was dissolved. And ever since then, I cannot bring myself to be angry at anything that this person does because everything that God pulled off, every identity, every story, everything that this person did was illusion. And it's just like, wow. And that's like, the crux of the yoga as well. It's like, even though I'll tell you, I know I've meant, maybe mentioned this before, but 
many I love my psychedelics. We all know that. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of the plants that God has put on this earth. They're way fun. Um, I'm going to use the bathroom while you talk. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you guys, um, I was saying what what Emmy is saying about, um, let's see here. Let me go back here. So what Emmy was saying about uh, everything being an illusion, my, uh, one, one of my first, and there's, there's chief, chiefs, chiefs and Emmys, Emmys, (laughs) um, the first time that I ever did a whole day trip on magic mushrooms. Um, and now everybody knows I'm a huge fan of microdosing, which isn't a full day trip. But the first time I did a full day trip, I was very young um, before I'd ever started practicing yoga. And towards the end of the day, if you've ever done a full day, you you typically want to be outside. You don't want to be inside. You want to be out in nature because you can literally see all of the energy everywhere. And towards the end of that day, I had this realization. I was walking down the street. It was a little rainy outside. And I had this realization that nothing in life is real. Nothing. That we are have created this illusion. We've created a hologram to experience ourselves in. And so in that moment, I literally knew that everything thus far, everything that happens in this life, is just a part of that same illusion that we have created a hologram. We've created a Shakti, an experience that is only temporary. And so I had this experience. I was saying, Emmy, when I was tripping on shrooms and little did I know years later, I would be in India basically studying the same thing through the text. But I had that realization. That's why sometimes psychedelics can be very healing as well, because it opens up parts of your of your perception that maybe you're not open to. Because when we're in these moments of the ego, when we're in these moments of survival, they feel very real. But when we're able to, and we were going to kind of go into the idea of witnessing things, which I mean, you were saying, because you've been com- you've become very invested in the law of one as well. Um, and you've been rereading the first book and Ross says there are four. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and how that kind of comes into play with Christ consciousness and experiencing the witness? And yeah, yeah, there's it, this. Th- I, I'm glad that I am re I bought the physical books like I bought. I bought the 40th anniversary set. Girl, look at that. <laughs> so I, w- I was reading them online. Um but I don't know. I, I prefer nice to have your own. You can, I'm laughing because you guys, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Emmy, but Emmy and I, you know, we're, we're friends. So we talk off camera as well. And you left me a message today and you were like, I'm going to do what I have to do because I am not coming back here. And the fact that you, <laughs> you, you've gone full on academia. I'm going to buy everyone. <laughs> so that's why I started laughing when you pulled it up. Cause you were like, if you guys could hear that message, she was like, I'm not coming back here. <laughs> I'm going to get that. I'm making sure I pass. I don't care if I have D's. I'm getting the fuck out of this place. Hey, you know, what What do they call somebody who graduates medical school with a C average? A genius? A doctor. Like, <laughs> a doctor. And you, you know, if you got that D minus, you're still going forward. So. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to save that message forever because she's like, I'm not coming to <laughs> I giggle when you pulled that book out. She's like got her got her arsenal. But yeah, go ahead. So so you were you were talking about the law of one and go ahead. I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Yeah. So so with my um books, I'm uh I got my page saved here, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. I have all these tabs with different like subjects and topics. Um so I can easily go back and reference. And that's something that you can't do. Uh, when you read them online. I mean, I, I suppose if you like bought the Kindle version, you could do that in Kindle, but I don't know. I like, I like having a physical book. Um, so um, this is on, it starts on page 116 in my book. Um, it's session 10, book one, session 10. Um, Don Elkins, the questioner, Um, asks, for the general development of the reader of this book, could you state some of the practices or exercises to perform to produce an acceleration toward the law of one? And Ra says, I am Ra. Exercise one, 
This is the most nearly centered and usable within your illusion complex. The moment contains love. And now I underlined and highlighted this because this is exactly what A Course in Miracles um, is talking about with the holy instant. Like every moment contains love and you can access, you have access th to that all the time. All the time. Um, so he, Ra goes on to say, that is the lesson or goal of this illusion or density. So the less, lesson or goal of this density is this moment contains love. And so the exercise is to consciously see that love in awareness and understanding distortions. So when you're looking at your life experiences, things that are happening around you, things that are happening within you, if you can consciously and intentionally ask yourself, okay, where's the love in this? And then focus on that. That's the, the, the first exercise. Um, and it's it goes on to say, it's talking about the first attempt, the second attempt, and the more you do it, it like exponentially compounds the um, energy that you meet that is given back to you uh, by God, by the universe. So it's like <clears throat> the more you seek it, the more you try, the more your effort efforts are going to be doubled and redoubled back to you. It's like, I will say, Mr. Fox says this, like people, I know people in the comment section be like, well, how can we find love when X, Y, and Z is happening in our world around us? And Mr. Fox says, that's simple. That's so simple. So the more the bad guys start to do things that are out of your control, quote unquote, what is in your control? You know, you look at places like um, South Africa, they've got a lot of load shedding going on where their, their power is turned off. Well, can you make sure your neighbors have enough blankets to keep themselves warm can you be of service in that love even to yourself in those moments because in the grand scheme of things even as as what law the law of one's is saying in the course of miracles is saying is that what were we saying emmy both the positive and the negative are distortions of the illusion they're, they're both distortions of god the absolute yeah. so you have you have god the absolute um complete and total innocence all power complete and total love like that is zero point the zero point right anything that is um a subset or a, a fractalized part of that one um of god is a just the law of one calls it a distortion and so you know the positive polarity distortion negative polarity distortion and i really really love how raw is very neutral very neutral is not attached to either side both paths and he 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 kind of emphasizes this repeatedly because don the questioner doesn't ask too much of the negative path ask about the negative path too much and so Ra chimes in and says you know it's important for you to know that both paths are equally valid you know sometimes Ra refers to the negative path as the path of that which is not because you know you can't get all the way back up to god the absolute through the negative polarity because you know once 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 the negative um once the beings in the negative polarity reach very early six density how you how you polarize further from there is your higher self will go back to all of its previous lives and help and assist but as soon as soon as a negative entity helps in any way it, it polarizes positive. itself positive yeah so, it can only exist like what the the negative side only goes up to five den fifth density because then it has to come together anyway it all comes together anyway and you're right that's one thing mr fox has said over and over again is that raw is very indifferent he says it over and over again that both sides are equally valid valid and i know that's hard for people to hear it's really hard for people to hear that but again that's us being attached to an idea that we're more self-righteous it's the mm -hmm. other then which is a distortion anyway and i know that's going to trigger people because of what what they do but your choice your choices are bringing you 
on one path or the other while you're riding that ride of distortion. So for Emmy, me, and hopefully everybody watching, we are actively trying to choose the positive side. We are actively trying to choose that side, which is of service to other people. But other people in this world are not choosing that. They're choosing the negative path. And that is why, my friends, again, why when you hear these people saying that the bad guys are gone, that's just simply not true. It's not true. They're here and they have just as much a right to be here as we do. And when we get self-righteous in that idea, then we're that's us going negative too, because that's service to self. It's very complex, but once you really think about it for a very long time and get out of that idea of I'm right there, wrong, ego, 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 and, and wit be the witness of it, really just kind of witnessing it as an observer, it starts to make total sense. Absolutely. So yeah. go on, go on, Emmy. It's the, it's that transcendence of duality. It's, it's, you know, taking a 30,000 foot view and realizing that, like you were saying, you can't have um, light without dark. You can't have up without down. You can't have in without out. You can't have life without death. You know, it's all of these are, are, are um, equal and opposite experiences so that we can learn and grow from our, our catalysts. It's One like, informs the other. Yes. That's, yes. and that's what, it's like you can't have like we just we just read the wall of time the key of time for the emerald tablets you can't have eternity unless you understand limited time right mm -hmm. so you don't understand for you to know that your soul is eternal you wouldn't even understand that if you weren't in a body that has a, an expiration date a limit yeah yeah so you, you need it we need each other we need the that's the friction that's the friction that's how it causes the the spark of light of, of aha moments so all right yeah. go ahead Emmy Okay, so the first exercise just to review is this moment contains love. Where is the love in this moment? Um, second exercise, the, the universe is one being, one being. So when a mind-body-spirit complex, and this is the terminology that Ra uses to say a person. So when a person views another person, see the creator. That's, that's it. That's the second exercise. When you view another person, intentionally look past all the stories, all the identities, and see God, see the creator, see the creator. As I Ram Dass said, we're all just God dressed in drag. Yeah. <laughs> exercise three, gaze in a mirror, see the creator. That's a hard one. Um, that one right there will will show you if you're willing to just observe and witness it will show you all of the places where you feel insecure have self-doubt believe that you are not worthy not worthy of love like that one looking in the mirror and trying to see the creator is is challenging it's challenging but it is so incredibly eye-opening um exercise four gaze at the creation which lies about the mind body spirit complex so gaze the creation which lies about each person and see the creator so it's giving us these simple yet very effective tools we can use on a daily basis find the love in each moment especially difficult moments um when you look at another person intentionally try to see the creator when you look in the mirror intentionally try to see the creator and when you look around everyone that you see, every other body that you see, see the creator. So, and, and this is, this takes practice and it, it was really uncomfortable at first, but because God gave me that experience with me sitting cross-legged and all my identities and stories being pulled off as TV screens, and then the person that I hated or that I thought I hated and the same thing. And we're the same. Um, it was. It gave me a a reference point, a context with which to use these these exercises. So, you know, I'm gr I'm grateful for that. Um, if you haven't had oneness experiences, um, I just would recommend. You know, if if you're if you're feeling led to do this type of stuff, just give it a give it a go. Just start, and you will be met with the same energy that you are putting forth uh, in your spiritual practice. 
And I wanted to, while you were on that Emmy pull up, this is our manual from the yoga uh, Reiki course that Emmy and I have done together and hopefully we'll do together soon in the future. But there's a great quote from Saraswati Joyce. Now, of course, like in the physical asana practice of yoga and Ashtanga, we get real hot and sweaty and we move our body and create friction because it's cleaning the body and it's preparing us for the friction, this dichotomy of life. And Saraswati Joyce was Guruji's daughter. And she says, practice. It is said that where there is no effort, there is no benefit. Strength, stamina, and sweat are unique, unique aspects of traditional yoga, seemingly contrary to the Western perception of yoga. This demanding practice requires considerable effort and taps to and circulates a vital energy throughout the body, strengthening and purifying the nervous system. The mind then becomes lucid, clear, and precise. And according to Sri K. Patabi Joyce, wherever you look, you will see God. Only through practice will we realize the truth of what our guru often says. Everything is God. And so if you look at what, even though Saraswati Joyce is referring this in, in, in relationship to a physical yoga practice, you can also see this through practicing things like the Course of Miracle or practicing the, the uh, exercises Raw gives because there is effort there. You have to put effort in in order to create the strength and the stamina to continue to integra integrate really what the truth is, is that you are a soul. You are, you are experiencing the, this fractal of God that's just trying to make its way back home, make its way back to the oneness, the law of one, that we are all one. That's why it's called the law. It's not called the law of two. It's called the law of one, you know? And so, you know, everything is God. Everything is God. You know, we get, we get very self-righteous about that. And we say, oh my God, why isn't God doing this? Why isn't God doing that? When we're, we're so in those times, and I do it too, we all do it, but in those times of great, great pain and great, great misfortune that we perceive it as, can we not rewire our thoughts around that and see it as an opportunity to ignite change? Because just like karma, there is no such thing, guys, as good karma or bad karma. There's no such thing as good karma or bad karma. That's something that you, that's a label you've given it. Doesn't mean that's true. All karma is, is cause and effect. That's all. It has no, karma has, karma is neutral. Just like raw, it's neutral. It's just a reaction to an action. You drink water, you got to go pee. That's karma. We label it as good or bad. We are the ones that attach these, these illusions to, to an event. Does that make sense? Yeah. And one of the other experiences that I had um, and it really changed my perception towards people who have hurt me. Um, so every catalyst, every life lesson that I have been presented with, I truly believe that I chose. I chose that before I came here. And in order for those experiences to happen, I had to have the teachers and the teachers were the people who abused me. And I know that is kind of a really bold thing to say, but in order for me to learn what I wanted to learn, I had to go through that experience. I had to have that person, place, or thing happen in order for me to have the experience with which to learn and grow from. And so now when I think back of the people who hurt me and abused me, and I look at them as teachers, I am incredibly grateful and I get emotional because they volunteered to do that. And because of that, they have to then repay that karma at some point. So it's like, you can really, really change your perception of someone when you can look at them and 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 have those kinds of, of of thoughts about a person. It's like, you know, I I've done so much forgiveness work, um, and and when I look back at this these these people, I can genuinely and authentically say thank you and have gratitude in my heart because I don't. I don't envy what they're going to have to to feel and experience and go through because of what they did to me. You know, everything has, every action has 
equal action, right? Yeah, exactly. So everything that you do think or say is, is going to have an effect on you, on other people. And that has to be balanced. That, that has, that has to be balanced and figured out and worked out. And the universe is perfect. It's perfect. If there is something that I feel is evil or wrong or bad, it is my perception that's wrong. It's my perception that's wrong. And 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 with all of these tools that, that I have at my disposal that I'm learning, I can consciously and intentionally choose to use them. And I know when I choose to use them, it the the anger, the sadness, the the fear will completely dissolve. I've experienced it enough times to know that it completely dissolves. Love dissolves everything. It dissolves absolutely everything. And, you know, I know it can be so angering looking at the world and seeing the things that are going on. And it can be so frustrating. And we want to fight back and do all this stuff. But fighting back and resisting is making makes it persist. Problem persist. It makes it grow. All you got to do is say, okay, I see you. I hear you. This is this is happening. Hi, sweetheart. Um, however, I am going to choose to believe that the universe is perfect and this is all happening for a good reason. And I just don't understand what that reason is. And right. you know, it, it's it's so comforting. It's so comforting learning all of this stuff and knowing that. I don't have to go out and fight all these systems in the world. You know, I can just see it and forgive it and accept it and say, no, no. And that's what we talk about in yoga too. It's like, you know, we look at some of the most horrific things that are happening in our world right now, especially with children. And what we're not saying that you, you don't, you just ignore things. No, you, you say no to it. You, you, you stand up in your own way to try to show that you don't approve. You make choices within your own life to not approve of that, but you also have to be equanimous in the sense that, you know, there's a higher, there's a, can you be equanimous? And I see that a lot in our, in our world. I mean, especially in this community that we found ourselves in that's labeled the truth or community, which I've said in every single video, I can't stand that name. I think that's the most arrogant self-righteous label to give yourself is the label of truther. Like a teacher, a teacher is someone who gives out teachings a truther is someone who should be able to give out truth but none of us know the truth we're not third density is not the density of knowing it's the density of making choices you won't know fully until you're in a higher density so let go of that be liberated of that notion that you have to know we're seekers we're seeking what the tr- what what the truth is in this here now moment and so i see so many people though in this this community that are like i'm only going to be happy happy when the new financial system comes in or when this happens or that happens. It's like chasing. It's no different than chasing the dragon or chasing what, what, what's the drug term, chasing the dragon, chasing the, you know, that you're there's, there's conditions to that happiness that you have self-imposed on yourself. You are a belief of ego, by the way, belief of when ego. You, yes. When you, when, out, when you believe that outcomes bring happiness, that's, that's the second in the catalyst journal exercise that I did a video of just recently um, re-explaining uh, Aaron's con- Aaron Abke's concepts. The second belief of ego is that outcomes bring happiness, and we, when we're attached to a certain outcome, then we are setting ourselves up for a lot of anger, and and yeah, it's it it is so eye opening. Um, just learning all of this stuff and applying it. it it's applying it that gets you know juicy you yeah. know and, and it, it's it's just and and i'm not saying when i say um you know look at the world and the evil and stuff and and just see it and be aware of it and forgive it i'm not saying if something's happening in your immediate area just to you know oh this is happening i forgive it no if, if there's something that you can physically do like do the loving thing the yeah. loving thing would not be to allow someone to get beat up in front of you that would right. not be a exactly. loving thing to do you know it would definitely it would- interfere but what i'm saying is you know don't actively go out and and fight these systems if there isn't something 
immediately in your experience that you can handle and help and control. That's kind of right. what I mean by that. And that's kind of what Magdalene said in her gospel when she talked about the wisdom of the wrathful person. She's not saying vigilante violence is 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 a negative polarity. If you're going to go out there and start hurting people because you think of a, you think a certain way, then you're not. That's not acting in love. So what she's talking about with the wrath, the the wisdom of the wrathful person is the anger that you're feeling. You said again, as as Emmy said, is a catalyst point to change within yourself. And when something is in your vicinity, that in your life, if you are in an abusive relationship, I mean, I have both been there. If you are in a situation where there is something that is hurting you in your own physical reality realm, absolutely do the loving thing to yourself and others and change it. But when it comes to world events, there are so many complexities that are happening. And I, I, it makes me sad. It makes me heartbroken when I see people say, I won't be happy until this happens. No, it's just, it, it, that's no different. I know that our audience, Emmy, um, I know from my demographics, I have mostly people who are 40 and older. So I think I can safely say that by most people watching right now, especially the women folk out there. How many times in your life did you think, oh, if I just get this boyfriend, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. That's no different yeah. than saying, if I will, I'll only be happy when the new financial system comes in. I said that for years about my weight. When I get in a normal sized body, I'm not going to have any problems. And I, tr I truly believe that. Well, I can tell you as somebody who's very skinny and always has been, I got lots of problems. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just outcome happiness is not happiness at all. No. Happy happiness comes from, from within you. It's and like Yeshua said, the, the kingdom of heaven and hell lie inside of you. At all times, they lie inside of you. Whether you're under a Nassara system or whether you're under the Federal Reserve system, whether, you know, Jeffrey Epstein is alive or not, whether that power lies within you, it lies within you. And I will know even, you know, I mean, like, the, the, I know most of you are watching this, these three years have been a struggle for us. There's been a lot of friction these last three years, a lot of friction that's been offered. I'm, but I'm relatively, we all go through, I mean, I go through slumps of, of, of depression. We all do it. But relatively speaking, this is one, this is probably the happiest I've been in my life. And I'm still under a financial reserve system. I'm still under the same thing. You, But but I love, what about your my, my life? I love my dog. I love my boyfriend. I love the things we do during the day. You know, there's just, there's, I love my friends, like Emmy. Like I just have such, you know, and so, and so in that situation, you can, or I could sit here and pout and say, I'm such a victim. And that's it. When you, when you allow yourself to be a victim, as according to the, what the law of one says as well, you're putting yourself in a place of enslavement. And enslavement is the path of the negative side. So mm -hmm. if you're allowing yourself to be enslaved, then you're going negative. And it's your choice. And that's if that's the path you want to go on, which is Ross says is a valid path, then that's fine but you're the one that controls that. No one else, you, you control that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, the conversation we had before we started recording and when we started recording kind of like mushed together and I don't remember what all we've talked about or not. We, so we've gone through the Course of Miracles, the four points of Ra, right? The four, the, the practices that Ra says you can do in the first book to start to practice the same thing Course of Miracles is teaching, the same thing yoga is teaching. Um, did we talk what, about how, did we talk about how I took a break from yoga and then when I started back up? Yeah, we did. We, okay. Yeah. The integration process is necessary. The cocooning process is necessary. Sometimes, but you do have to have that discernment, whether that's your ego or necessary. So you really need to work on your own discernment to be able to discern your own ego, right? Mm -hmm. um, do we talk about, we haven't talked about Pluto and Saturn, have we? Oh, no. Yeah, there's so much going on astrologically, guys. Venus just went in, into retrograde and she is um, training the North Node um, and making a yod with 
two other aspects. And there's just like, if you guys haven't looked up Molly McCord, she has a really, she has a really good set of videos. And the one that I just watched recently was so good. It talked about Venus retrograde with the yacht and stuff. If you guys haven't watched her before, I highly recommend I'll going and watching. In, I'll pull her channel up. Molly McCord. Molly McCord. Mm -hmm. Very so that's going on with Venus. And then also we have Saturn and Pluto opposing each other. And whenever you have an opposition aspect, it creates tension and, and motivation. And we've got Saturn and Pluto <laughs> opposing each other. And they're both in retrograde. Is this the right Molly McCord? Yes, this is Molly. I'll yes. put her, her channel down in the description box below, guys. Yeah. So you told me this morning that Saturn and Pluto were like doing their tango. And I was like, oh, as my best friend would say, fun, fun. Yeah, fun, fun. fun. <laughs> so if, if you guys, especially the last couple days and then a couple days from now, um, it is tense. If you notice it's tense or if, or if something came to a complete standstill, that's Saturn, Pluto. But fear not. <laughs> It'll be done in a couple of days. <laughs> it's just an experience, guys. It's just an experience, right? How boring would life be, though? Seriously, if you guys sat back and thought about it for a minute, how boring would life be if we were all born and everything was just taken care of? Mm hmm Yeah. We wouldn't learn anything. We wouldn't grow. We wouldn't be able to honor the, the good times. We wouldn't be able to understand who we truly are unless we're put to the test of who we truly are. You know, it's... Also yeah, absolutely. I, also, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm scatterbrained. I've cut you off like three or four times. Sure. Today is today is the feast of Mary Magdalene. Is it really? Yes. My girl Magdalene. It's your feast day, girl. It's what's today? Again, the twenty second of July. I didn't grow up Catholic, so we didn't get no feast days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. oh, my girl Magdalene. What's so funny because that we're we're in the middle of Magdalene on a. Uh, the Sophia Code on the Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa. Of course, we've already done the Sophia Code on my channel, but that's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Magdalene to me, and it's so I'm, I'm working on a video for next week, you guys, um, about another historical female. And I'm not going to say who she is yet because I, I, it's, it's a very scandalous story. But I, when I was doing my research, the, what, what drew me so much to this woman, and also I think what draws people to Magdalene is you see yourself. Mm. And these women, you see pieces of yourself and Magdalene, you know, she, she's such a sassy broad, which is, I think what we love about her is that she's a sassy, she's a sassy broad, but she's also, she, she has that dichotomy of, of being very strong, very alpha, but also very motherly as well. Yeah. And so, so that's awesome that, that she's popping up during this time too, because that reminds us of the Magdalene within all of us. We all have that Magdalene within us. You know, that's, I know there's a deeper meaning to the Magdalene. I still haven't figured out what that is yet. Um, I, I don't think we will know until we have more of the missing works available. But, but I think that's something that represents all of us, even the men watching right now, that intuitive, strong part of us that is able to withstand the storms. I know you've told me, Emmy, before, because with Pluto and Saturn being in direct opposition right now, <laughs> can cause a lot of fun stuff to come up in your life. And you've told me before, you're like, Bryce, you've survived 100% of the things that have come your way. And mm -hmm. isn't that the truth with everything we're talking about? Everything, you know, sometimes in our lives, in order for us to realize that we are literally just the witness, we have to be pushed to the limits of our own suffering to realize that it's not even real. Mm -hmm. It's just an experience. That's all it is. For your soul to refine itself and so every time you find yourself in these and i know it's easier said than done guys i totally get that i know it's way easier uh, that's why i think have i told you the story emmy about the 99 percent practice one percent theory with guruji have i told you that story yes but tell it again so back in the 60s and 70s when before the white guy before the white man started coming to india to study to study yoga with with this famous guru patapi joyce he would say 70 percent practice 30 percent theory there's a little bit of, of of a way to kind of sink into the discussion of the theory but then all of a sudden these white hippies from america started showing up in mysore 
India. And all they wanted to do was sit around and smoke pot, drink coffee, and have philosophical discussions. And it was like a great day. It was a great day, right? <laughs> Lots of enlightenment with coffee and pot, especially the pot. <laughs> and Garuchi would get so frustrated because these guys were missing the point that he changed it to 99% practice, 1% theory. The theory doesn't mean shit unless you're actually taking it and integrating it into your life and practicing it. Everything makes sense in theory. Everything sounds good in theory. But when you actually start to do and practice that theory, that's when everything starts. You start to go, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Right. Because mm -hmm. uh, you start to have that realization of how many um, cobwebs and tangled thoughts you have that have really limited you to the truth of who you really are, which is that you're a soul here to just it's like I, I often say on my channel, I mean, it's like. If we look at all of the lives we've lived and our soul is what's integrating in and out, weaving in and out of all these different experiences, it's like going to an amusement park and mm -hmm. you stand in line for the Superman ride. Like you have actually, you're, you're choosing to stand in line to take this, this ride that's going to simulate, it's all simulation, right? An experience for your adrenaline to pump, for you to have that experience as a, as a person. And then once you get off the super, but you know, it's going to end and you know, it's not real and you know, it's going to end and you're going to get off and you're going to have to pick the next ride. And the next ride you might pick might be like the lazy river where you're just going to kind of float through this experience or splash mountain. I hate splash mountain FY because that water at an amusement park smells so bad. <laughs> then you get splashed. And you got to sit in those soggy, smelly clothes. Talk about a yeast infection waiting to happen. But anyway, some people want that experience. And so they go and they ride Splash Mountain. Yeah. And so if you think about your life as that way and all the lives you've lived, you are the soul that is choosing these simulations. And when you get in line for that ride, you know, when you get in line to ride the Superman lot ride, you know, you're not getting on the lazy river. You know, you're going to be screaming and your adrenaline's going to be pumping and you're going to be going upside down. You know full well that's what's happening when you're standing in that line. You're excited about it. You're anticipating it. No one's forcing you to do it. You. Some people will stand in line for two hours just to take a five-minute ride. That's how much they want that experience. That's how much your soul, because I swear to God, I, I got in line for the haunted house. I think that's what I got in line for. I, I got in line. I wanted to go to like the Freddy, Chucky, you know, terrorizing. That's, I was like, that is, I stood in line for like two fucking hours. <laughs> Cause I wanted that experience. So here I am. Now I'm in the experience. I'm in the simulation. I wanted to be here because I wanted to experience this hologram so that I could learn more about myself, about my soul. And so, and I, I will say too, you know, at, at the amusement parks, they have certain height charts. Like you have to be a certain height to get on a, a ride or a certain age to get on a ride. Same thing with planet earth right now. The law of one talks about this. Nobody on planet earth right now is a new soul because planet earth is in her ascension moment as are you. So you qualify. Not only did you pick to be here, you qualified to be here too. So ride this ride, baby, because this is what you signed up for. Put your hands up in the air and let the experience show you what it don't resist the experience. Let it show you what it was supposed to show you. Does that make sense? That pretty good analogy. That was a great analogy. That was great. I loved it. <laughs> next life, I'm taking the lazy river. I don't care what my guides say. I want the lazy river next life. <laughs> Actually, next life, I think I want to leave the amusement park and go to the spa. Oh, yeah. Is that an option? Can we get the bus to the spa? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and you guys start uh, another exercise. I would say, you know, start start observing your just start observing your body. If it's too hard right now to observe the world around you and see God in the world around you, start to observe just your body. Because that's really what you're really experiencing. Like, you know, when a baby is born and it figures its hands out. And it's like, holy shit, I got hands. You know, babies, and they, they put their foot in their mouth because they're like, what is this cool thing that I've got attached to me? 
You know, can you can you see your body that way? Can you see the intricacies of God within your own body? Start with that and then expand outward from there too. So, all right, you guys, any, Emmy, is there anything you want to close out with today? No, it's just so nice to be on a, a, a zoom with you again, Bryce. Like I kind of feel like I just exited the scene for two months. I mean, I did a couple of videos with my, my friend, Patricia, who's in uh, a course in the living the course, a course in miracles school with me. Um, but yeah, I just kind of feel like I've been out of the loop. You know, when you sleep 10, 12 hours a, yeah. a night, it's like, I don't know. It, it's, it's weird. <laughs> and it's hard. It's so, I mean, we know, I know that I get that. Like, it's so hard. You guys know I'm the, I'm notorious. You can ask Emmy. I'm notorious. Well, I'll have like 30 text messages on my phone. And I won't respond until, until like a month later because you just get so ca ca caught up in your work and in, you know, it's not, never anything personal. Remember that guys, it's never personal. It's always that person is just trying to get their work done. So that's totally understandable. And girl, you got a puppy. And and tons of other things as well. <laughs> I remember so, um, just Rob real quick. Um, the last two group Reiki sessions, I um, I just I couldn't do it. I was so tired, I just couldn't. So next Saturday, um, the group Reiki sessions will will resume. So awesome! I'll it. put that. Send me the link. I'll put up my community tab when okay. uh, uh for people that link so um oh one more thing i wanted to close off with emmy on tuesdays uh, jay Catherine hillis and i are doing a broadcasting course uh emmy's a part of it where we're helping people especially if you're doing a sia um, we're helping you learn how to create content how to market yourself um i am really excited about it because i got i get to use my first education before i ever went to india the first education i got to talk more about how to story tell and how to um you know that truth is what you don't tell us you don't sell a story you tell a story because truth is um is what really people really resonate with and so if you guys want to join that course we're opening it up if anybody wants to come in and join that course on uh you know i've i've offered to help people create channels um and how to again storyboard all that kind of stuff uh just text j at 321-216-8047 and just put in like broadcasting course or something or just in that text let him know you're interested in joining that course and he can call you back and give you all the details our next meeting is three o'clock eastern time on tuesday um and again i can send you notes from the first meeting if you're joining late about how to uh storyboard how to figure out what your content is going to be all that kind of stuff so anyway guys um emmy's in that course too so if you guys want to join that course just just let jay know so all right girl great anything else is that it that's it all right bye everybody have a wonderful bye. day we'll talk to you soon bye guys bye